All right, well, today I want to talk to you about the voices that you're hearing. I want to talk to you about the voices that you're listening to and the voices that you're allowing to take root in your heart and in your life. I remember growing up as a kid, maybe you've had a similar experience that being somewhere in a public place with my, my family and in particular my dad, and I could be in a, in a crowd and getting separated from him. I remember one time we were at a baseball game and just in the concourse of the stadium and got separated a little bit, and I could... I could yell out to my dad but, and just yell, Dad, and you know what would happen? I know there were 50 other dads in that place, but only my dad turned around. Only my dad heard my voice, and he turned around and responded in that moment. Now, I want to talk today about what it means to, uh, what, what voices you're listening to. Because I think as I kind of gone through the years as being a parent, I've realized on the flip side of that, when, when my kids would call my, my name and would call out dad, I recognized their voice. It was distinctive in the way that they uh, called out to me. It, I could hear them differently maybe than, than uh, anyone else in the crowd. And there's this instinct as a parent that you're able to respond when you hear your kid call out mom or dad. You're, you have that response. And I think sometimes in life, life can be full of noise and crowds and there's all kinds of voices that are around us. But God wants us to be intentional about the voices that we're hearing and we're settling into in our life. So today we're going to look at what it means to kind of hear the voice of God. And with so many voices and opinions that we can listen to, how do we kind of hear the voice of God and how do we respond and let that be what takes root in our life and let that be what we respond to and not all the other voices and all the other things that are crowding in and, and speaking to us. Have you ever noticed how much a voice and someone speaking something to you can really make or break your day? Man, I've had days where someone said something encouraging to me. They said something just... Uh, challenging to me, that was uh, life-giving to me. And I tell you what, those are the days that I feel like, man, there's nothing that can stop me. Those are the days I feel like, boom, I'm going to run through a brick wall. Does anybody ever have a day like that? Like, or am I the only one? Okay. All right. Well, listen, see me after church and I'll give you a word of encouragement and hope. And maybe then today you can be like, today's your day that you can run through that brick wall. Okay. Uh, but then we have days where maybe something is spoken to us that is, uh, you know, it, it's hurtful. Maybe it's, it's actually devaluing to us. Maybe it's something that, uh, man, it really hurt. It really digs at us and irritates us. Maybe it's something someone said that's close to us. It's a family member or a coworker or a boss or someone in our life that we, we hold, uh, we hold respect for, but still that it can hurt. And man, you can have days like that too when, ooh, man, that hurts. I don't feel like I can run through a brick wall. I don't feel like I can take another blow. And those voices are all the time in our life. And I think helping us navigate those and understand how they influence us is such an important part of our faith journey. It's such an important part of what God wants to do in our life. And he wants us to be able to discern the voices that we're hearing, okay? And this isn't a sermon on multiple personality disorder. This is a sermon on, on really kind of what it means to hear the voice of God. But the reality is we have voices coming from every direction, right? Like we have the things we... we, we uh, here are coming at us from every direction and they're impacting us. They're influencing our thinking. Think about it like this. The things we listen to and hear, they actually inform our thoughts. And then our thoughts, in turn, that steers our behavior. And then our behavior determines so many other aspects and directions of our life. So today when I talk about hearing the voice of God and when I talk about what we're listening to, it's getting to the root issue in our life. You see, there's a lot of things we can say, oh, I need to be better at this or I need to do this and I need to be more like this. But the reality is we need to first address what we're listening to and what we're ingesting and, and what we're kind of using as a guidepost in our life 
to help us navigate the, the, the every day, the, the, the challenges we're facing. And, and it's the, what we're thinking that, or it's what we're listening to that informs our thinking and our thoughts then steer our behavior and our behavior then influences the direction of our life, the consequences we face, so many aspects of our life. So we have voices from every direction, right? We have family and friends. I know growing up, one of the things, and my dad was such an encouragement growing up, and he always said, like, Don, you're such a leader. And I actually, like, it was an encouraging thing that he said it. But at the time, I was like, don't label me. You know, like, I'm just a rebellious enough as a, as a teenager to be like, I don't, I like wanted to push that away and I didn't want to embrace that but maybe even people have labeled you in different ways maybe friends or family have put labels and spoken things over you that then you've taken and grabbed hold of and you said well that's true that is the label that is me that's who I am and you've kind of resigned yourself to the this is how it's going to be and this is this is how life is going to be going forward and and this is all that I can be maybe you've bought into corporate America that's saying listen you're listening to corporate America and this is what you need to do to be better and this is how you get ahead and if you could just get ahead and be successful in your career then you'll have it made and and then you'll have more money than you ever need and and that's the goal of life and we can listen to that and that then steers our motivation and it steers what we invest ourselves in and and it steers so much of like the time and energy we put into uh, life Maybe we listen to our culture and they're saying now it's like there's one way of thinking and if you don't believe that way and you don't think that way, then you're wrong. And there's this, this divide that says that, you know, uh, do what feels good and that, that's the most important thing in life. But the reality is when we're listening to the culture, it's, culture is ever changing. And if culture is ever changing, it makes it hard to really understand God in that context because God is unchanging, that his faithfulness and his love is steady and it's true through time and time again. So we have to try to understand that uh, what we're hearing around us, and I think the biggest one, the biggest voice we maybe hear is our own voice. We can be cynical, we can be critical of ourselves, we can hold ourselves and and really kind of talk negatively. And uh, honestly, if I'm, I'm, if I'm honest with you, and I, as I talk today, it's like that can be some of the things that we struggle with the most, that, that, that when we, we are going through life, we struggle with that inner voice, that inside voice. And, and myself, I've gone through seasons in my life where it's like, man, I don't think I, I can do this. I don't think this is possible. Or man, I really messed that up. Or, I really dropped the ball there. Or I really kind of... Uh, you know, failed in that way, and I, and I kind of beat myself up for it. But God's like wanting us to listen to his voice more than any other voice in our life. So how do we navigate that? How do we live that way? How do we put that into practice? Today I want to talk about the power of listening to the right voice. And the, the power of listening to the right voice, and that voice is God's voice in our life, really can kind of change the trajectory of our, our life. My sister-in-law, I love her to death. Uh, she, when we are all together as a family, she'll start to tell a story. And as she's telling the story, she gets more and more excited. She starts to elevate her voice. She elevates and elevates until it's like louder than anyone in the, like the whole house can, you know, everyone in the whole house can hear her. And, and she's just getting excited. It's just who she is. I love it. But I've come to tease her in those moments. And I finally tell her, I say, Summer, listen, use your inside voice. Now, she every time responds like this. This is my inside voice. And I think sometimes we have this inside voice. <laughs> like it's internal. It's that inside voice that's louder than any other voice in our life. It's louder than any voice that... that uh, that we have externally that the internal voice is actually challenging us. So it's important that we shape what we think and we understand what God's word says about us and we understand the things that God has for us in order to test those, uh, those thoughts against scripture, against what, his, what we're listening or what we're hearing has to be tested against what God's word says about us. So that's how we hear God. We listen to him. He can speak audibly to us. He can 
uh, through his Holy Spirit, impress things upon us in our times of prayer. But his word is one of the greatest sources that we can understand what he believes about you and I. And his word is the, one of the greatest sources that we can understand the principles and the promises and the truth that he has for each and every one of our lives. I'm thankful for that, that I can unpack and hear God. Even in the times when I feel far from God, I can crack open the word of God and I can hear what he's saying to me. I can almost kind of tune the right frequency and get around the right channel to hear what God is speaking about me, to test the inner voice and the inner thoughts against the word of God and what he really says. And so I think it's important for us to do that. Because we hear all these things about who we are and what we should do and how we should believe. And I think we're being informed from every direction when we should be listening to the one with this eternal perspective. We got to keep in mind that God sees the long view. He sees the long plan for our lives. He sees a purpose and a, and a plan that he has for each and every one of us. And he wants us to grab hold of that. And that God is saying, listen, the world is saying you have to behave this way or you should do this thing or you should fill your life with these things. But I have a plan for you. And so I have a purpose for you. And so we're, we're in this place and in a crossroads where we can decide, okay, do I want to live God's plan or do I going to live the, the other voices and the things that I think are best or the, what culture and uh, the world around me is saying is best. And, and we're left with this choice. And that choice is, is sometimes uh, it's a moment where God puts us under his grace and we can accept the grace of God uh, and find forgiveness in him. But it's also to another level, a daily choice that we have to decide which plan that we're going to live under, which purpose we're going to live under, which promise we're going to live under that day. Am I going to live in mine or am I going to live in God's? And so when we're listening to these voices, we have to realize that there's a, there's a, there's a different path to take each and every day. I want to look at a scripture in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses uh, 9 and 10 this morning. And this scripture is Peter, he's talking about, I'm sorry, 1 Peter, I, I got it backwards. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Uh, but Peter is talking about really kind of that contrast of people that are living in God's plan and those that aren't living in God's plan. And before we get to the scripture, he's kind of talking about those that have decided to live their own plan and reject God. But then in verse 9 and 10 of the scripture today, he's talking about those that are receiving God's plan. Now, today, I want you to receive this as we read this today, like it's the voice of God speaking truth over who you are. Because I think that's powerful. It's something that we all need to grab hold of. And he says, but you, you're different. He says, you're not like that for you are chosen people. You're chosen. You're a royal priest, a holy nation, and God's very own possession. And as a result, you can show others the goodness of God for he called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. And it says this, once you had no identity as people, now you are God's people. And once you received no, mer received no mercy, but now you have received God's mercy. Let me tell you, this is what God's saying about you. He's saying, listen, you're a chosen person. He's saying you're a royal priest. He's saying you, and what this means is that you have access. A priest is someone that has access to God. He says that every person has access to him. He says that then you're a holy nation. He's not talking about a political system or a government. He's talking about every person that's united under the blood and the, the forgiveness and the grace of Jesus Christ. And he's saying you're a holy nation. And then he says you're God's own possession. Such power in thinking of that God is our, that God looks at us in this type of way, that we're his chosen, we're royal priests, we're a holy nation, we're his own possession. And actually, Peter is drawing in this section of scripture from the Old Testament. He's drawing from the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 19, when God is making a covenant with the Israelites, he's saying, listen, he's declaring some things over them because they didn't understand their identity. You see, the Israelites had come out of bondage and they'd come out of slavery and God is leading them into a place of freedom and he's, God's trying to 
help them understand his purpose and his plan in his life. And so God is calling Israel his special treasure. This is what he says in Exodus 19. He tells them, he says, if you will listen and obediently to what I say and keep my covenant, out of all the peoples, you'll be my special treasure. See, what God is trying to speak here through Peter and then to the people of Israelite is that God, when he's doing something new in your life, he's redefining and relabeling you. He's uh, speaking some things over you, and he's a voice in your life that is going to uh, speak life and, and, and change the trajectory of your life. And he wants every person to know that, listen, you're my special treasure. Now, I know, without a doubt, there's people in this place that says, you don't know, Don, my past. You don't know the things I've done. There's no way that God looks at me as a special treasure. Listen, my Bible reads and it says that Jesus died upon this cross. He walked this earth because God loved us so much. God loved us so much that he said, I want to give you the grace and I want to be in relationship with you. I want you, I want to be right by your side in this journey called life. I want to build you up and I want to grow you. And here he's saying, listen, uh, God is Uh, you're my special treasure, you're my chosen people. And you might be thinking, that's not me, that's everyone else in the room. But the reality and the truth is that God did it for every person. And every person that calls on the name of Jesus, that believes in their heart, and that uh, asks for forgiveness of their sins, God changes the label in that moment of your life. He changes the destiny and the the direction of your life for eternity. That's the grace of God. That's the message of hope that we have. But we have to kind of decipher as we go through life what voices we're listening to. Are we listening to God when he's speaking those things over over us? Or are we letting the inner voices or the voices around us in our culture, the labels that have been put on by other people, are we letting those things be what define us and determine the direction and the destiny of our life? God's saying, listen, I want to speak to who you are. I'm the one that you should be listening to. And I want you to get that this morning, is that God is speaking to who you are. There's a lot of things that you can use in life to discover who you are, right? There's personality tests. There's, you can kind of uh, uh, just get to know yourself and your, your patterns of behavior. There's things in my, my family that I get teased about because I'm just like, I do, I react in certain ways and I do funny things there. And I do things, you have things in life that speak to who you are. But God's saying, listen, I want to speak to who you are. I'm the one that puts value on you because that's what it's, it says in Peter there. Peter's trying to say is, listen, God is, is speaking his ownership of you. He's saying you're a royal priesthood. You're someone that has, uh, is serving God and you have access to him. You have access to him. You're a chosen people that you belong to God and that we all have an inheritance. That kind of changes things when you think about Think about it like that. Because the Bible even talks about it like this, is that we're sons and daughters, that we have then an inheritance that comes from God. It's eternal life. It's, it's peace and hope and, and uh, blessing in our, in our life now. And that's, the, that's what we can grab hold of. And so God is, wants to speak to who you are. So I think we have to allow God to speak to us, to, to determine and, and that be a voice that we're listening to. I love what Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14 says because it kind of clarifies it. It says the spirit of God's, uh, the spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Now get this. It's saying that God, we are his chosen people. We're, then here in this scripture, it says we're his own people, that he's purchased us. So there's, there's this concept in the Bible that, that God is an owner. He, he looks at us like, like we're part of the family. Like he owns us. He has responsibility for us. Like he's going to take care of us. And there's power in ownership. There's power in God thinking and understanding that God owns us. And, and ownership actually applies value. It actually applies value. Think about it like this. I I don't know if we have any Michael Jordan fans in the house, but uh, greatest basketball player of all time. We can debate that later. But Michael Jordan last year 
uh, had a pair of shoes that went up for auction just last year. And those game-worn shoes, they were beat up and ratty, a little messed up. They actually had a glass shard embedded in them because he broke the backboard during the game. But those pair of shoes, because Michael Jordan owned them and he wore them in a game, they sold at an auction for $615,000. Come on, somebody. Anybody want to buy me those shoes? I didn't think so. Listen, isn't that crazy? But ownership implies, it, 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 it speaks to the value. And I can't believe that. You think about that. Like, maybe after church, I'll, do, I'll auction my shoes off in the lobby. And, like, we'll give it all to kingdom builders, okay? So I'm believing that we can get to 615 today. So God bless you. So actually, I probably had to pay you guys to take these shoes. So... Uh, but the reality is, listen, ownership matters because someone owns something that applies value to it. And God is saying, listen, I, I, I bring you in. You're, you're part of the family. His ownership is putting value upon you. We can grab hold of that. That's a voice. We've got to listen to God's voice. He purchased us through the sacrifice that Jesus gave and, and, and through the grace we have available the reality, though, is the enemy and Satan, they, he tried to speak things over us that are negative, that they accuse us that we're not good enough for God's grace, that it's for other people. He drops thoughts in our minds that we're unworthy and that we're just a failure. But the reality is God is saying, listen, you have to put that away and grab hold of my voice and what I'm speaking over you and the things that I have for you. So when we have a lot of voices in our life, we have, to, we have to kind of zero in on God's voice. You have to hear your high value in God's voice. He's speaking things that he's putting value to you and who you are. You have to hear that. You have to hear that, and you have to hold on to that. And so God wants us, listen, there's a lot of voices that, that not only that are coming at us, but uh, a lot of things that God is doing in our, our life, we have to hear the high value in God's voice that he's speaking at us. And I think sometimes our lives, though, they're playing out like an episode of like People's Court. It was like when I was growing up or like Judge Judy. And it's like there's a dispute over ownership. And two people are coming into court to let the judge decide. And I think a lot of times we navigate our life and we're kind of in this dispute of ownership that day in and day out, it's like a battle back and forth. And, and we have to settle in our heart that we are sons and daughters of the Most High King. And we do that by accepting Jesus' grace in our life, making a decision to follow him. And that's the greatest hope and purpose and place that God puts us in right standing. And so we have a lot of voices. So not only is God speaking to who you are, but God is speaking to what you are. He's speaking to what you are. He's speaking that, listen, and actually he, he says it in verse 10. He says, as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. And so we're made to glorify God. See, God's saying, listen, you're made, and your life's purpose is to bring glory to God. But what does that mean? That, can, that sounds like, okay, that's a good thing to hear on Sunday. But what does that mean Monday through Friday? How does that mean and how does that change how I live my life? You see, as we go through life, if we're living in God's plan and our purpose is to bring him glory and our, our purpose is to point to him and, and to worship him, there's kind of two folds the way that we, we do that, two-fold way that we do that. God's calling us out of darkness because he wants us to show others his goodness. So our job then and our purpose becomes to bring glory to God in everything. And that's twofold in, in the ways that we worship him and we lift up his name and we give him praise for the good things and, and the, the way that he's faithful through every part of the journey of our life. And God is speaking that and, and wanting us to live in a place where we're glorifying him through our, our praise, our worship to him, but also in the way that we're pointing people to him. That God's saying, listen, you bring glory to me, not just by worshiping and smitting and, and, and drawing close to me in your own heart, but you do it by pointing other people to him, to him and pointing him to, 
uh, God's grace. And that's why at Highmark, we always have a culture where it's like, hey, we, wanna, we want you to invite people. We want you to point people to Jesus. And we always make it a point that it's not about a person, but it's about Jesus and his grace and his goodness in our life. And so God is speaking to what we are doing and, and what we do in life. And our job is to bring glory to him. Our job is to point people to him. Now, I, I think sometimes we, we get the instructions wrong in life. So a couple weeks ago, I was at the gym, and I go to a gym where uh, we have a coach, and the coach walks us through what we do in every station, and, and it's a group of us at a time that are working out, and they, okay, here's how many reps you do, and then you get, get off the, that machine, and then you do this exercise, and for some reason, I think I just have an ADD as a person, but I, I will get to the end of that instruction segment where they just laid out exactly what we're do, supposed to do for the next 10 minutes, and I'm like, what, what'd she say? What'd they do? What am I supposed to do? And I forget in that moment what we were supposed to do. So I decide, okay, I'm going to play it cool. There's a board at the end that lists what we're supposed to do, but I can't see that board from where I'm at. And so I said, okay, I'm just going to play it cool. I'm going to just start doing it. I start looking just at the person next to me and the workout that they're doing. And I'm like, okay, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to watch them. When they get off and they do the exercises, then I'll just do whatever they do. And then I'll go and then I'll do, go back. And then I'll do probably half of what they do. And then, you know, like, and then I'll just keep following them and watching them because I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do in that moment. I zone out and I miss it. I miss the instruction. So we get to the end of the workout and I, I, I go, man, what a, what a great workout. I kind of took, they, they always have a moment, hey, high five someone, tell them like, great job. And so we get to the end of the workout and, and I'm, I'm like, whew, I kind of got through it. No one was any the wiser. I looked like I, I knew exactly what I was doing. And I get to the end of the workout and the, the person next to me just looks at me and says, man, I'm glad you knew what you were doing because I missed everything. <laughs> And so the two of us probably missed the whole, like, workout. We didn't work as hard as we probably should have because we were looking at it. We got it mixed up and, and thought that the other person knew what we were, we were supposed to do. And in that moment, we're, we're both just lost and doing it wrong. And I think sometimes in life, we've missed the instructions on what God wants us to do. And we get satisfied with just kind of comparing and measuring up to the people around us. When God says, listen, you're calling, and the things I have for you are unique, and they're that you're in a sphere of influence that is unique to you, that the people that I put around you are the people that I, I've called you to, to be a messenger of my hope. And that God is saying, listen, your job is to bring glory to me in your own life and point people to me. And we try to make it easy here at Highmark, even to point people to say, hey, come to church. That's why we're doing Chick-fil-A Sunday next week, because that's like the easiest invite you're ever going to get to church is to say, hey, would you come to my church because they're doing Chick-fil-A on a Sunday and you can't get it anywhere else in town and it's going to be so good. And, and so, but we do that because it's a, a culture that we know that we're on a search and rescue mission, that our jobs to point people to Jesus, our jobs to kind of live that out in life. And God is speaking to, his voice is speaking to us and saying, listen, I have a, I have a plan and, and I have a purpose for you and it's to bring glory. It's to worship me. It's to share more uh, to more people, the good news of Jesus. That's what we're supposed to do. So our job, listen, we got we to gotta hear, we got to hear the voice of God or hear your higher purpose in God's voice. God has a plan for us. And I love that he empowers us to do this. We have a higher purpose in God's voice. And I love that he, in Acts chapter one, he says, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He's saying, listen, it's not that you have to figure it out. It's not that you have to do it on your own. He says, I'm with you. I'm, I'm empowering you to do it. I'm giving you the boldness. And so you can hear in the voice of God him saying, I have a higher purpose for you. I have a bigger plan for you than even you can think or imagine or hope for. That's what I want to grab hold of in life. And I think when we're internalizing, we're listening to all these voices in life, I think the biggest thing and why this is so important, and I want you to get this today, it's so important that the voices you're listening to is because a voice will become your viewpoint. A voice will become your view, viewpoint and forever change what God or the trajectory of your life. 
So you have to be careful with the voices that you're listening to. It's important that we are tuning in God. We're, we're hearing what he's saying. I remember years ago that uh, I just sent with someone that was newer to their faith, and they, they, they just asked me, they said, hey, how, how is it that, how is it that you, you talk about hearing the voice of God? How, do, how does that happen? How do, we, how do I do that? And I think, like I said, God speaks to us in a number of different ways. There's moments where his Holy Spirit speaks to us, and it might be in part of a worship service. It might be in moments when we're, we're singing, and, and the, the words just pop off the screen, and they're like, that's for me. That's something I need to declare. There might be things and moments where the Holy Spirit speaks to us when, when we're looking at God's word, and we're looking at scripture, and we're studying it together, and we say, you know what? I need to, I need to take that. That's mine. God's speaking to me. But let me tell you, the greatest way that God is going to talk to you is if you dig into his word and you explore what he's already written about you and I, what he's already declared over us, and you grab hold of that, and you live that out in your life, and you understand really what he wants to do in and through you. And that's how we hear the voice of God. We, we, we know that we can spend time in prayer too, and God is going to speak to us. We can ask him, God, you know, give me direction. Give me uh, the plan for, God, how do I handle this situation? What do I do here? And God can, can speak to us. He can give us that wisdom, and he can use a friend to be a word of encouragement or a word of advice or a guidance in our life. I'm thankful that God speaks. He's our living hope, like we sang this morning. He's with us every step of the way. I want to pray for all of us in just a moment that God would help us to hear his voice because that voice becomes becomes your viewpoint. And when it becomes your viewpoint, then it can either grow or limit what you see and what the ways that God can do in your life. Whatever your viewpoint is, is either going to grow or limit what God can do in our life. And my prayer is that it will grow and you'll see the good things that God wants to do in your life and how he wants to change your life because you got your focus on the right voice. Would you bow your heads this morning?